Well, let's have a look at Falstaff, or Sir John, or Jack, the funny man in Henry the Fourth, Part One. He's ha ha funny, um, but he's also sad funny, or some people might consider him to be sad funny in, in the way he lives his life. That's up to your opinion, of course, but certainly there's no doubt that he's the comic character of this text. What's his deal? Well, he's a rambunctious character. He spends most of his time eating, drinking, thieving, whoring, and sleeping. He can be seen as Hal's surrogate father figure, and he aims to lead Hal astray in life uh, and lead him down a path of carousing. But he also looks to gain advantage through having this relationship, this quite close relationship, with the heir to the throne. He's the comical character of the play. He's one of Shakespeare's most famous and most well-loved creations. Uh, he has been uh, a guide for, for many other characters of a similar ilk. He's certainly well known and well loved by, by critics and by audiences alike. What's he like as a person? Well, he's immoral. That's the first thing we need to recognise about Falstaff. He's lazy, he's selfish, he's dishonest, he's corrupt, he's a thief, he's manipulative, he's greedy, he's boastful, he's lecherous. These are all words that describe Falstaff and you can come up with many more. Um, how right from the beginning, as Shakespeare starts to set the scene and set the tone for this character, attacks uh, Falstaff in, in our first uh, introduction to him. It's, it's a scathing attack, but it's an honest attack. And even Falstaff himself doesn't deny the insults that the prince throws at him. Yet at other times, Falstaff uses his words and his wit to deflect the responsibility from himself from his poor behaviour. He looks to blame others, to blame society, um, to, to sort of spout off his innocence. Um, so he's, you know, he doesn't, in some cases, doesn't deny um, when people say he's a bad person, but at the same time, he, he, he's not all that willing to accept responsibility uh, for his corruption. There's a devil haunts thee in the likeness of an old fat man um, happens during the, the play between um, Falstaff and Prince Hal when they're acting out the king and the prince's relationship. Um, and there's some other quotes there. Certainly it's clear um, that, that Falstaff is a bad character um, and has many bad qualities. But as you can see there in that third quote, Jack has this sense that, well, I'm no worse than anybody else, and, he, and if you're going to banish Falstaff, you might as well banish everybody else in the world, because we're all just as bad as each other. So again, there's not always that acknowledgement that he's such a bad guy by Falstaff himself. He's funny. Certainly he's one of Falstaff's, uh, one of Shakespeare's most loved and most funny characters. He's funny in wit, but he's also funny throughout the play because he's the, the brunt of jokes and insults. Whilst he's a criminal, he's not a very effective criminal, and so he doesn't necessarily receive the scorn of the audience as a typical villain might have, because, you know, while he's doing the bad things, it's not really hurting a lot of people, um, and so, you know, because he's so poor at being a thief, then people sort of feel sorry for him, almost, in a sense, and yet, at the same time, by the end of the text, when we look at the way he treats the soldiers that he's um, conscripted to come into battle with him, there is a sense that there are some qualities there of Falstaff that are quite dangerous and are quite bad and that people uh, would and, and perhaps should look down upon. His opinion of himself uh, is so far off the mark that it's humorous as well. Um, and this is one of the things that also finds um, Falstaff to be a comical character, that he seems to have this opinion of himself as a great person, a fantastic person, that's just so far off the mark that, it's, that it is quite humorous. And so for all these reasons, um, Falstaff seems to endear himself to the audience. There's some quotes there, you know, you can see in the second one, um, you know, he talks about being as valiant as Hercules. Um, and, you know, the, the, some of his one line is, you know, a plague upon it when thieves cannot be true one to another. Um, you know, thieves in, by their nature are quite dishonest people, and yet he's talking about thieves needing to be honest. So certainly there's a lot of lines that Falstaff brings out that show his, his humorous side. He's a coward. Um, you know, this is, this is debatable, but certainly his cowardice is, is the butt of Poins' prank in, in Act 2 when they look at um, robbing him and, and Poins mentions that, you know, this is going to be funny because he's not going to fight and then he's going to talk about how he fought, you know, hundreds of people. So that's sort of the butt of their joke. And at the Battle of Shrewsbury, uh, he pretends to die rather than fight Douglas. Uh, so there's indications there of his cowardice. But Falstaff is adamant that he is no coward and he 
you know, sort of thing. So what could be seen as cowardice by some may actually be smart self-preservation. And he thinks, you know, the idea of falling um, down and pretending you're dead in a battlefield isn't cowardice, it's actually quite smart. So there's some quotes here about it. Um, you know, the, the third one there, to the latter end of a fray and the beginning of a feast fits a dull fighter and a keen guest. This idea that... Um, you know, a bad soldier comes when the battle is about to be over and there's an indication that Falstaff is planning on doing something similar to try and avoid the fighting and the skirmish as much as possible. But then, as he said in the fourth line there, quite a famous quote, the better part of valour is discretion in which the better part I've saved my life. So he is actually, you know, he wouldn't say he's coward, he would say he's smart and he's trying to, to hold on to his life. How does Falstaff fit in with the themes? Well, in terms of honour, Falstaff really wants nothing to do with honour. He doesn't really see a lot of value in honour. He asks the question, what is honour? And he answers that it's only a word. You know, particularly in the midst of battle, if you lose an arm, honour's not going to put an arm back on you. If you lose a leg, honour's not going to stitch your leg back on. So he doesn't put a lot of stock in honour. And in fact, he mocks Blunt uh, on the battlefield when he finds Blunt, who's quite an honourable guy, um, he finds him dead and he says, well, there's honour for you. His preference definitely is for life over glory and honour. He would rather be living a life uh, carousing um, than be dead and have people think he was honourable. And yet, he claims to have killed Hotspur in order to gain some reward. And so this is uh, a question you need to, to think about in terms of Falstaff's idea of honour. Um, does he disdain honour or is there some inkling towards honour within Falstaff? Because he does look at getting some reward from, from killing Hotspur and, and you could argue that he's looking for honour and in fact he mentions at the end that if he was to receive some reward that he would change his ways and he would start to live like a nobleman. Um, so that's a, that's a question that's worth getting your head around. Um, whether he was after honour or whether he was simply after sort of the wealth and the privilege that comes with, with fake honour in a sense. In terms of father and son relationships, he is the surrogate father to Hal. He's somewhat of a mentor and a guide to the young prince. Um, and so he's one of the ones that, that helps Hal sort of live out this, this rebel life, this carousing life. Falstaff acts as a foil to King Henry. That is that they sort of offset one another. We see um, two different types of father figures in Hal's life, two quite contrasting father figures between King Henry and Falstaff. And they off, off, uh, offer two opposing paths that Hal must choose. Falstaff's affection for Hal is clear. Um, even though he can be seen to be leading Hal astray or in what many people would consider the wrong direction. In terms of order and disorder uh, or anarchy, Falstaff uh, is a key indicator of the nature of disorder or the nature of anarchy that's, that's in England at the time of this play. Um, he's a knight. He is Sir Falstaff, he is Sir Jack, he is a knight, but he displays nothing of a knight's chivalry. He doesn't have the qualities that a knight should have, and there's a sense of disorder there. He's not really a man of the quarter, though he should be. He's more a man of the taverns, and there's a sense of disorder there. Uh, he sees legitimacy in his occupation as a thief. He doesn't really see anything wrong with what he's doing, and in fact, he encourages the prince to join him. So again, there's this idea of disorder being apparent there. Falstaff as much as any character in the play, is out of order and is adding to the anarchy in the realm. So what are the questions you should ask yourself about Falstaff? Well, similar to Hal and Hotspur, how does his idea of honour compare with theirs? What does Falstaff think of honour and how does this compare with Hotspur's and Hal's? Remember, one of the central ideas about this text is about honour and what Shakespeare is suggesting about honour. And with these three characters, we get some very different pictures of honour. Considering Falstaff's behaviour, why isn't Falstaff a villain or a bad guy in the play? He's not, you know, he he's, has a lot of poor qualities and yet he's not a character that's despised or hated in the play. How does he come away being like that? How does he get off uh, in a sense? How does he get away with acting the way he does and not being disliked by audiences? How would you describe Falstaff and Hal's relationship? Is there a mutual affection between these two? Is it a balanced relationship? What is Edge getting out of it? How, you know, how would you describe that relationship? And finally, in what ways is Falstaff an important character in the play? Uh, why is he there? What does he add to the play? What would the play be lacking without him? 
there's a number of different avenues that you need to consider in answering that question and it's important to answer um, that question fully. So in what ways is he an important character? So there's four key questions I think that you should be asking yourself if you want to get an understanding of how Falstaff fits in with this text.